gonna be great. All right, gang. Welcome to the third episode of Pitch Slab. <laughs> Robert, your face says it all. <laughs> like, what I did I walk a, into? I didn't know there was a whole intro. I didn't. I wasn't aware of that when I signed up. So yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So hopefully by the end of this, we have you going. Pitch <laughs> slap. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. So as usual, you have Dynamite Dan Simcock and me as your hosts. And we are here with a very special guest, the very talented Robert Mix, who is a chef extraordinaire. You you heard here, he went to the CIA. Some might tell you it's the Culinary Institute of America. Some might tell you it's the Central Intelligence Agency. You decide. He's a man of mystery, a self-proclaimed hot mess express, an actor in various independent films, and he is a writer. And he will be helping us... Um, you know, ask some cool questions, give some good advice, you know, and, and look cool while doing it. So, Rob, thank you for joining us. You know, thanks for having me. You know, here to have a good time. <laughs> what, what's good? <laughs> it's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, all right, so last week we talked about a... Um, a Dutch vampire story set in rural Pennsylvania and a original ghost story uh, that Dan provided with us that uh, had us questioning some of our own ghosts, which is all very good. So hopefully you check those videos out. And um, He has a whole introduction. I, you know, he came prepared and Rob, I, every time... I need to come better prepared. Sorry, Stefan. No, no, <laughs> I you're see good. you reading an introduction. I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> I've got like two, a page of notes. <laughs> Sorry. No, man, that's good. I, I have to write it down. Otherwise, it doesn't stay. It doesn't stay. Did you write down Rob's introduction? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no, okay. no, no. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I saw you peeking down. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> No, that's just the amalgamation of everything we know from being stuck together for a while. Yeah, that's right. Robert and me were, were friends in high school, and then uh, I didn't know he was back in town, and I bumped into him at a Walmart. And then I was like, hey, man, you want to be in a movie? And then he was like, sure, I guess I can do that. Yep, I met him in a Walmart, a Walmart, and then I was in the woods with a panther head. <laughs> Amazing. Very, That's how it usually goes with stuff. And <laughs> yeah, very quick zero to 60 on that one. <laughs> yep, yep. And, uh, you know, thick and thin ever since. So it's been a beautiful, beautiful thing. And now he's stuck with me forever. Just yeah, like you did. worse things that could happen. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. All right, so this first thing perhaps would fit in that category of worst things that could happen. Um, so, Dan, if you're cool, are you cool? Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Uh, is this a bad story? <laughs> is uh, it a true-to-life story? No, or at least not that we know of yet. Um, so the title of this story is called The Doom Tide. Like, uh, and I, I feel like I'm, I said doom, doom, D O O M. Yeah, Tide. And I'm saying that because it sounds like Dune in my head, but Doom Tide. Um, and it takes place in a small coastal town in the Florida Keys uh, during the 1980s. And uh, the main focus basically is this librarian uncovers, or not uncovers, but connects a string of kidnappings that are happening across like the island um, to an ancient evil that lurks beneath the surface. Right, so as it turns out, right, um, there is an ancient race of octopus-like creatures that live beneath the waves, um, and they are and have been stealing women to breed with in hopes of fulfilling their prophecy of the doom tide. And the doom tide is when their forces, right, their numbers are massive that they will ascend out of the ocean onto land and and start their colonization or possibly sink the land into the ocean so there's just ocean that they'll rule upon um i haven't quite decided uh you know their whole plan yet um 
So this is not a happy story by any means, right? The the humans lose, right? Like I'm talking, they think they have like, oh, this will kill them, right? And then like that plan crumbles in, in the moment in the movie or the story where you're like, okay, this is it. Like if a half millisecond left to save the world, they're going to do it. And then like they pull the trigger or they, they initiate the plan and it fails and then they they die, right? This is not happy, right? So the creatures will win, right? And I feel like it's like there's a, the librarian and his ragtag crew. So you have a librarian. You've got a female's news anchor. You've got a scuba diver and a real estate broker, right? So, like, all jobs you would have on the island who are trying to, like, oh, okay, you found this obscure book that talks about this weird history. The news anchor talks about the kidnappings. The scuba diver sees some weird stuff underground. And the real estate agent is having all these houses that are empty because people are moving because they lost their child, wife, daughter, sister, you know, niece, nephew, aunt. Not nephew because that's, you know, maybe. Um, you know, so... That's that's kind of the story. It's not a happy ending. Um, it's really just a boiled down idea. Uh, inspirations for this, right? So like the Gungans in Star Wars Episode One, right? Like Jar Jar Binks and like, blah, 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 like those guys, <laughs> like their whole underwater setup, I think would be pretty d dope. Um, there's a movie called Humanoids from the Deep that Roger Corman made, uh, which is similar, right? It's about these fish people that are emerging, uh, hooking up with women to, like, reproduce more of them. Um, you got The Abyss by James Cameron, right? They find aliens underwater. Deep Rising by Stephen Sommers, which is about these mercenaries that stumble upon, like, this tentacle monster, uh, that is eating a cruise ship. And then, like, uh, like Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft, like, that type of stuff. In fact, um, the movie Underwater with Kristen Stewart, that would be another one. Um, this is definitely a Nicolas Cage vehicle, right? Where he would play the librarian, who I feel like his name is Noah. I don't, maybe Noah, um, Noah Winsworth. That's what the librarian's name would be. And then the news anchor would be played by Bonnie, uh, Bedelia, who played, um, Mrs. McLean or, uh, or Gennaro uh, in the Die Hard films, like Die Hard 1 and 2. She played John McLean's wife. Uh, the scoop. The Die Hard movies. They're great, especially on the holidays. <laughs> the first two are on Christmas. Uh, <laughs> um, they should. They missed an opportunity there. Santa should have been a terrorist, and John McClane had to stop him. Um, <laughs> and then the scuba diver should be Charto Copley. Um, he was in District Nine. I feel like he would be a pretty good. Uh, character just like off the cuff kind of crazy especially kind of like how he was in the a team um i think the real estate broker should be david ole lowo ole i don't i'm butchering his name but he played martin luther king jr in selma and uh and he was in this film gringo and he just does a phenomenal performance in that and then i would like the creatures to be played by doug jones who did the creature in the shape of water and it would be super tight if Guillermo del Toro was like, yeah, I'll make this a movie. That'd be super cool. I have questions. Shoot, my friend. How big are these octopus creatures? Like, I pictured something, like, akin to a kraken. But, like, <laughs> if they're, like, pulling the island... Uh, like, I, I know a potential ending is, like, they drag the island underwater, Right. Like, how big are, or is it, like, there's, like, a bunch of, like, little ones, and then the big mama, like, <laughs> takes it underwater. Also, I'm kind of sad to hear that Nicolas Cage isn't the monster, like, you know, why doesn't he, like, I feel like he gets, he should have, like, a dual role where he gets to play at least one octopus. I, I would yeah, be real about that. Would, the real challenge would him be playing all the characters, just in, <laughs> just in different wigs. And you really get really get the true range of his acting ability. One hundred. I, I could. I You've would just taking it to an eleven. I love it, Rob. <laughs> you both. You both present very, very uh, like important questions, hard hitting questions. Uh, to answer your question first, Dan, you ask about the size. So I figure these octopus s creatures are roughly like the size of your average man, right? Possibly a little smaller, like, you know, between 5'5 five, five and 5'8. Five, they're not, like, 6 foot. 
Um, and I like the idea of having like a big mama, like a big mama ancient one that's just like I'm the I'm the kraken, right? And it can do stuff, but like it needs like minions to to go up on land and do and like get the women and get materials. What are we gonna call the big mama? The big mama. Um, that's a good question. I, I might look up how to say big mama in like Samoan or something, or like in Latin, and then go with that way. Okay. Like that could be a route we go. Oh, or in Hawaiian, right? Like, like how whatever big mama translates to, like big mama of death. That might be the Hawaiian version of that. The Ohana Mama? Ohana Mama, that's it. Ohana Mama, right? The Ohana Mama. <laughs> Isn't this happening in Florida? Yeah, you know, like, you know, it's the same idea, right? It's an island one way or the other. But yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> um, oh, man, there should have been, like, a Florida Man-esque character that Nicolas Cage plays. All right, whatever. Okay, so the idea you had, Rob, Dude, about you still have you still have the opportunity to like add characters, like. All right, so maybe there is a Florida man s character, and like it's Nicolas Cage's twin brother. So he has like you know the dual role. One dude is like long hair, you know, and is uh you know just like a red like a hippie redneck. I don't know whatever Florida man is like, and then his brother is like this reclusive librarian, and. Uh, the Florida man as guy, they think he's dead, but he ends up being like the hero in the second movie or in the second part, right? Part two is when they're taking the fight uh, to the octopus creatures. You know what I mean? And I like the idea of Nicolas Cage going full cage, playing like all these characters. But like, I don't know if anyone will feel sympathy for like Nicolas Cage as a woman if he has a beard. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, that woman, she's gone, or she's getting like you know attacked by that monster, and it's Nicolas Cage screaming. You'll probably be like, yeah, he's probably into that. He deserves this. <laughs> that was a, that was the train of thought went from like lady and a beard to you deserve to be, and I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think it would be great either way. Either way? All right. So um, I do like that idea of Nicolas Cage doing the Eddie Murphy thing where he plays everybody. You know what I mean? That's a bold thing that people don't do anymore. We, like, we don't have a lot of movies where, like, where you see one actor playing the same character or, like, twins or, like, uh, like the parent trap, how Lindsay Lohan is playing Lindsay Lohan. I thought she had a twin for the longest time as a child. I think everyone <laughs> did. But they don't really do that much anymore. So, that, you know, that'd be a cool directing choice. No, absolutely. Chris Cage is the new Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on every billboard. Right, so it's yeah. a cage and cage in the doom tide. And then the sequel's got to have, like, cage in the name somehow. Yes. Just like the Doom Cage. The Doom Cage. <laughs> Enter the Doom Cage. And then it's like, you got to go to the chamber where they're keeping everyone. And he has to save, uh, you know, all the women and be the hero that Earth needs him to be. Oh, so these women survived the mating process? I was not expecting that one. I mean, some of them do. Some of them, I feel like they probably die. You know what I mean? Okay. It's not yeah. a happy story. I haven't... Uh, I haven't really thought that far ahead, <laughs> but those are good details that need answers to. It sounds like a reverse, like, siren like thing. I, I, here I am bringing, like, a serious detail, but, like, I think the mythology around, like, sirens are, like, mermaids, right? Like, they drag men down to the deep, yes. and they, like, do the dirty with them, and then, like, they're not seen again. You know what I mean? So... Um, I feel like it's sort of a reverse uh, siren slash mermaid thing. I also feel like there's a little bit of like Ariadne, like that Ariadne myth. I think that's the person who gets like sacrificed on a rock by her family, you know, uh, to a monster. Um, oh. So I see a little bit of that in there. Um, yeah, I, I saw a lot of Godzilla stuff and I don't know if that was intentional, um, but just some like megalithic monster that you know is sort of unbeatable um everyone's frozen right um nope okay sorry it froze on my screen like everybody was frozen for a second sorry um 
All right, we're good. Okay. We're, good. we're back. We're back. Did they, okay. Was I the only one who experienced that? No, uh, it, it was, I was, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, uh, it reminded me a little bit of Godzilla. Um, Shadow over Innsmouth. I know you said Lovecraft was, um, you know, the Cthulhu legend. Well, you took a little bit of inspiration of, from that, but I also see um, Shadow over Innsmouth as well. So you, you've got a lot of, uh, you know, inspiration you're pulling from. I dig it. You know, and I know we were joking about like, thrown Nicolas Cage in like every um every role but it sounded like based on your pitch uh that you wanted this to be sort of a serious movie uh great you know given that <laughs> the humans lose at the end so um correct me if I'm wrong no no I feel like definitely there's some serious attributes right that are going to be in it but I don't think that uh rules out the possibility of there being like humor in that you know what I mean like I picture, like, reclusive librarian, long-haired Nicolas Cage trying to talk to a news anchor. I feel like there could be some humor, uh, especially in the dialogue between them, right? As they start to uncover the case and connect with, like, this ragtag crew, um, I think, again, there's room to be humorous. There's room to show bonding, right? Some sort of connection that they all uh, walk together, um, even though it is, um, you know, it doesn't go their way. Kind of like... Um, color out of space right like mm -hmm. that is not a happy film whatsoever but there is that Nicolas Cage charm where like uh he tells his daughter to f off then says maybe I'll just f off and it's just like you're not trying to be funny but you're being hilarious you know what I mean yeah I get you and I think uh, that's a good example because, like, it covers – it has that kind of, like, this should have been made in the 80s type deal, but it's not. But if you – like, I'm thinking this has, like, the neon. It has a synth synthesizer score, right? Even as, like, a story as it progresses, I think it just needs to be really rooted in that time frame, you know. And it's like so not kind of like a stranger, strangers, uh, things vibe. Yeah, stranger things if they live near the beach. That's what I'm talking about, Rob. And instead okay. of it upside down, they're literally underneath them in the water, and they come out and like they mess up like the cool kids beach parties, right? They maybe storm the prom and take the prom queen. Like I'm talking like all the tropes, right? That are uh, quintessential to like the 80s, right, That you in horror movies, we do it. There's just, like, fish octopus monsters, like, erupting and stealing the women. I see I see series potential here. Like, not just... Let's not limit this to a movie. Like, let's make this a series just like Stranger Things with multiple seasons. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, it sounds like you're, you're trying to pack a lot of, like, horror tropes, a lot of, like, different inspiration. You know, let's... Let's dive dive into like little episodes and just like build that build that up. I think that could be kind of funny. So if we were breaking into seasons, then I think season one would end with the news anchor finally believing the librarian, right? Like it would end with like, oh, this is for real. Then season two would pick up with like her announcement saying, hey, there are monsters underneath the ocean and explaining what they're doing and then her boss fires her it's like you can't say nonsense like that on the air this isn't comic-con or something like that so she's fired so then it's about like her and the librarian trying to like find evidence which enters the scuba diver who goes underwater and finds stuff right takes some pictures maybe and then i think season three is the big like oh this is this is the end, right? Like it's the end time, or them going underneath to try and save people, and then the alien, the monsters coming up, and then maybe season three or four, I think, is when it would just be over. It'd be a three to four season show, and the oct octopi just like consume the island, and I assume the world too. Like it can't just like end with one island, right? Oh no! This is the, this is kidding. the world. This is the world. We're just focusing on one thing of the island. So I feel like they would do as it shows the island sink down. Right? It would pan like out and show like the rest of the continents like going underwater. And honestly, like I know in movies and stories, like we love like how he like fights back against adversity and like wins at the end of the day. But like in a realistic situation, 
the, like everyone's probably dead. Like if you've got a librarian, a news anchor, a scuba diver, and one other dude trying to figure out this conspiracy, everyone's dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But, Where's the like, government? <laughs> like, until you get someone with like an actual uh, level of authority to pay attention, it's like, where's the scientist? <laughs> Yeah. But uh, no, but no, like uh, like Dan was saying, I can see a lot of potential for where this story could go because with like the Lovecraftian elements, like you were talking about, and like inspiration from like the Alien movies, like these octopi things, like have a lot of capabilities, and like you give them a lot of different abilities to them to like switch up the story, whether it be like hive mind control or camouflage, because octopi naturally do that. So you could actually get a lot of different avenues out of that single idea. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I gotta write that down. <laughs> You're getting a little bit of Predator in there too, with uh, you know, the camouflage thing too. Even though Rob says that that's something that they can actually do, I had no idea. It's <laughs> we, that's that's uh pretty cool, you know. But it sounds like you're also integrating like uh, Predator in there as well. Oh, definitely. And then maybe like some alien type stuff, right? Where there's like like the eggs, right? That have been... I gotta figure some of that stuff out. But Do definitely. octopi lay eggs? These are more so. questions I need to look into. I'm gonna look that up because I gotta know now. <laughs> <laughs> but actual animal qualities, that's a great idea. You could even argue like is this like Atlantis, right? Like that kind of thing? Atlantis rising? No, Doom Tide. Doom Tide. I'm interested in like you you said Star Wars episode 1 specifically the the Gungum or Gungum? I I don't know how to pronounce them. I know what you're talking about. Um that like underwater What was that, Rob? Sorry. Octopus do lay eggs for the record. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Just like an alien. <laughs> yeah, they are aliens. I mean, octopuses were voted like the one of the smartest things on the planet outside of humans, right? If something were to uh, evolve and possibly enslave us, it would definitely be an octopus. Yeah. Uncomfortable thoughts, but yes. You, right? It is. You know, when they have an octopus that can predict who's going to win the uh what, the the FIFA World Cup, like that's kind of crazy. Did that happen? I mean, granted, they had two teams, and then they put food next to the two teams. The octopus just picked the food next to, like, the winning team's name. That sounds like the groundhog effect. Right, right. So it might be a stretch, you know, when you break it down. But, <laughs> but no, man. So I, I appreciate both of your, your input on this, and um, it's definitely a story I am going to work on. Um, as soon as I actually stop procrastinating, uh, the current one I'm doing, but it, you know, the title is what sold me is like, yeah, that's a good title. What can we build around that? How'd you come up with it? The doom tide. Uh, I was talking to Sam about a project he's working on. Um, and I mentioned it to him and then he was like, yeah, that's, that's a good title. There we go. You know, and it's like if the pinnacle of human achievement says it's a good title, then it must be a good title. That's when you run with it. That's when you run with it. <laughs> um, it's perfect, guys. Perfect. But uh, I also think Doug Jones, right? The guy from The Shape of Water. One last thing, then I'll stop talking. Um, that guy, like, I mean, obviously he's a human, but, like, he brings so much emotion, right, and, like, feeling to the creatures that he um, – uh, inhabits, right, or brings to life on the screen. So, but most of the time, the things he's bringing to life are not like um, vengeful or horrific or mean, mean intentioned, right? They're kind of like they might look scary, but they are they're like kind or they just want to be understood. So, I think it'd be interesting to see someone who can uh, make something, you know, scary, uh, have emotion and be kind, right? Instead of that kind part, it's just like, look, man. You're going to inhabit this thing and make it the scariest thing possible, right? You're going to bring dread. You're going to bring horror. You're going to shock people, right? So there's, like, no 
uh, other notes except be terrifying, right? You're not trying to make people feel for this thing. I, that took that I thought you were gonna like we were going down the road like we were gonna feel for this thing and then you're like nope not at all we feel no sympathy to these octopi um okay okay that that's an interesting note for uh, Doug Jones I think he could kill it uh like literally and figuratively <laughs> um you know he's a he's a pretty talented guy so good good casting choice thank you sir all right, so is the Shape of Water guy also the same guy from uh, I think it's Hellboy Two, the thing with the eyes in his hands? Is that the same uh, body actor? Oh yeah, guy? Pan's Labyrinth, like th from that movie. No, uh, it's uh, Hellboy Two, I think. Hellboy I think I think you're right, um, Rob. But he does play in Pan's Labyrinth too. Um, you know. I know he's in like I all of Guillermo del Toro's movies. Um, so yeah, he probably definitely made that thing come to life, Rob. Yeah, he was very. That thing was spooky. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so like, there's an example, you know, of of what you know what he could do if he's just menacing and scary. You know, so just more of that episode after episode, and he's all of the creatures, not just one, all of them. Oh, um. For like the the way it would be directed, would you would you have the audience think that it's just one creature for a very long portion of the like series, and then it's revealed like, oh no, there's thousands of these things. Yeah, like you know how like um, okay, sea turtles, right? When they hatch, right? It's not like they know there are other turtles near them, but then like once they get up to the surface, right? They like from the sand they they burrow out they all they're like an instantly scuttle like into the ocean so i want i think there should be a huge pan out shot that just shows like in the waves right one comes to shore then like it pans out further and it shows like like 20 or hundreds of them coming up on shore right like that could be like how season one ends right like just, okay, gotcha, just gotcha. and you know and it's nighttime and there's palm trees going in the breeze, and the moon's reflecting on the water. Then you have like the like the like the drive, right? The soundtrack from the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling, right? Like, do do do. Like I can't do it right, but it's like you and me, baby, right? Like night moves is playing, and it's like yeah, that's gonna be good. <laughs> gotcha. I I can catch I catch the vibe. I catch the vibe. Yeah. Right, it makes you question going to Florida if it doesn't already make you question going to Florida. <laughs> Can there be a part where they visit Disney Disney World? Ooh, that would be cool. It's a small world. <laughs> <laughs> they like take over the ride. It's quite possible, man. You never know. Symbolism. These monsters are taking over the it's a small world ride. <laughs> yeah. Proving that it really kidding. is a small world. <laughs> and the giant steps these octopus kind are taking. Maybe that's like the last shot of the last season. <laughs> it's just like those animatronics being like, it's a small world. And then it's just like a dying animatronic being eaten by, by an octopus. Yeah. And that's the last shot. I could see that. And it's like, I'm sure you have better ideas than that. No, man. It could be like, a, what are those? A montage, right? Of showing like important places. Like being squidinized, right? Be or octopusinized. <laughs> octopusinized. <laughs> uh, technical term. I hope you introduce that into the, like one of the seasons. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the librarians are like they've been octopusinized. <laughs> you even did it with the Nicolas Cage eyes. So yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, good, good. Uh, so it sounds like, for the most part, like I definitely take uh, what you guys are saying. I like the whole idea of uh, using their actual animal attributes and instincts, like what octopuses already have. I think that's really awesome. Um, and Dan, I really like the idea of you know spreading it out um, if it were to be like a season and rather than a movie, because I feel like there's more story uh, that can be fleshed out, not just for the characters but for the creatures uh, as well. 
Um, so, yeah, no, the Doom Tide. Um, I'll let you guys know, of course, when it's done. Um, but it is a, a work of progress at the moment. I all expect right. all four seasons on our on our desk in in a year or less. We'll return both of us. Yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> one that's one season a quarter, please. Yes. <laughs> I I will see what I have done for you by then. Looking forward to it. Beautiful. Yeah, all right, gang. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you out there enjoyed this episode of. Rob, you gotta do the thing, right? So it's like you hold the I'm arms out <laughs> of, of pitch slap. <laughs> and uh, get pitch slapped, Rob. <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe next maybe time. next time. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, we will see you next time. All right, bye.